Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you inside Canada Games Park here in St. Catharines for the first time. The Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week here presented by JBI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. As always, I'm Matthew Carrick. Joined tonight by Minto Cup MVP, first overall selection in the NLL entry draft. Jonathan Donville, you know, obviously Mimico quite well. And Steve Toll, the Steve Toll Bowl here tonight, a repeat of the semifinals from last year, St. Catharines and Mimico. Yeah, first of all, great to be here. So excited to be on the broadcast with you and, and really showcase the talent that these guys have. You know, these are the best players in the world for their age in, in this sport and, you know, excited to, to hopefully bring more eyeballs to them. So uh, I, I think what you're going to see tonight is two teams that want to get up and down. I think that fits the identity of both teams. Should be a great game. Always when these two teams go head to head, a defensive battle as well as the opening face off is won here by St. Catharines. Normally Mimico in the baby blues, but it's St. Catharines tonight and the Navy on the other side for Mimico as they start with Lane Hershka tonight. Quickly into the corner, Christian Lefebvre bringing this down. And our first time here, the sun sets behind our back and in the eyes, it looks like, of Hershka in this first period as the opening possession ends with a shot clock violation. You know, coach, I talked to Coach Dean George before the game. He said he thought they got a little complacent in their last two efforts. So that's a good start for their defense, try to set a tone here. Here's Finley Thompson to the outside from Carson Moyer. His shot skips off the end glass, and that's going to go up and into the St. Catharines bench. I think Steve Toll wanted the quick breakout there, passing it to Julian Race, and just too far. And, and, and for St. Catharines, talking to Coach Toll, just off ball movement, trying to get guys going through the middle, taking cutters through the middle, taking a defender through the middle. Uh, that's the focus for them. So let's, we'll see if they can do that early on here. Two teams coming in with nine wins. Good enough for a share of second place. I believe it's third now with Whitby picking up their 10th win and Oakville going up to 11. So these two teams tightly in the standings along with the Toronto Beaches. That shot just skipping wide of Austin Patty who gets the start for St. Catharines tonight. Bakta to the far side, Justin Sykes, a big fake. There's the shot. Patty makes the save and the rebound rolls into the corner where it's picked up by Cameron Pack. Pack takes a couple slashes from Curtis Bakta right at center and great play by there by, uh, by 88, Curtis Bakta. And as Justin Lee came over to provide the double team and now turn into a two on one, the low shot there from Aaron Taguri. That's exactly what Mimico wants. You know, they got a lot of big athletes, a lot of fifth year guys kind of imposing their will there on the uh, on the ride. Outside here for Lucas Dudamain. He'll find Sykes off the bench into the legs. There of Patty bounced around and eventually here for Lee who picks up the loose ball. Bakta cutting back again. Sykes will take top spot. Bakta far side. Dudamain's shot saved by Patty as well. You know, don't get a goal there, but Mimico will take that. Two opportunities, get a good reset, get a couple of great shots. Jackson Webster running in now, has to elude Liam Ferris right in front of that Mimico bench. Shot from Webster, scores! You know, that's the downside of, of playing a pressure defense, right? If you get beat, there are openings. So great move on the boards to beat his guy, and then a nice shot just squeaks it short side. What an individual effort from Webster. Doing that all by himself to bring it up into the attacking zone as well in front of that Minico bench. Webster giving St. Catharines the one nothing lead. Ben Doherty controls the face off here as Bo Columbus traded from KW along with Gavin Snow at the deadline. Be two huge additions for this athletics team. Jacob Garcia in for the Mountaineers tonight as he was acquired from Brampton at the trade deadline. Cross floor pass here for Kaskinen who picks the corner. What a pump fake here by Cascanet. You'll see a big hitch 
Goalie goes down, then he just buries it in the top right corner. What a shot. They're announcing long laid. I hope that's the assist on the Webster goal, because if he doesn't get credit for that, that's downright criminal. But 1-1 is the score after Brody Kaskinet ties it up here. Three and a half minutes into our opening period. If you're new to the OJLL format, three 20 minute periods. You know, if the rest of the game keeps up like this, we're in for some great battles off the faceoff. Well, I said a few weeks ago, St. Catharines doesn't know anything but playing tight games. And this will be a good one for two of the top teams in the Junior A. Looks like Hudson Thompson fell there on the near side and St. Catharines unable to capitalize as they did get the ball back to, I believe that's Carson Robbins with no time for a shot. Yeah, Mimico really dodged both there. Robbins was wide open, they just couldn't get it there on time. Bucked across Mimico's got floor. numbers here. Here for Dudamain took it to the cage, but Bo Columbus soaked the shot. And now, nearly a three on one for St. Catharines. Turns into a break for Mimico. Roussel up for Finley Thompson, who couldn't bring it down in the crease. Now, Cameron Pack, game starting to speed up a little bit back and forth. I don't know if you're aware or not, but selling 50 50 tickets here tonight, Jonathan. <laughs> Quite close to where we are. Ty Stainhouse, cross floor. Jackson Webster, no Clay Scanlon in the offensive lineup for the Athletics tonight. And on the Mimico side of things, as they pick it up with Garcia grabbing the Lucy, they're missing a number of players, most notably Jonathan Peshko, Matt Wright, Isaiah Moran Weeks. Big hit far side, and the officials look like the two trail officials were. Going to call minor interference, but Blair Ferguson will give the cross check as he's joined by Sean Grenier and Mike Melvin, the officiating crew tonight. Yeah, first power play opportunity here for, for Mimico. You know, you'd think either 22 Sykes or 44 Finley Thompson are going to get the look here. Sykes an interesting player because normally defensive, but we've seen step up offensively. Of course, we mentioned the two players not in offensively tonight as St. Catharines was looking to spring Julian race, but Sykes kind of a, I want to say almost Challen Roger-esque player. Yep. Can be back defensively, move up offensively as well and wearing the C and he'll be up on the O side tonight. Yep, I think you'll see him and, and also Finley Thompson mixed in a little bit on the penalty kill too, just kind of showing their skill set and what they can do. Quick bouncer there from Thompson. Patty able to squeeze onto the rebound. Another pass down floor, this time intended for Howard. That doesn't connect for the Athletics. That's about three that have skipped away from their intended target already. Yep, Coach Told not happy with that one. Is he ever happy? You've been on his bench. <laughs> yeah, he is happy. He, okay. he gets happy. Okay. Here's Sykes halfway through the power play. He'll go to Thompson. Back for Sykes, a little too high, just skipped off, but he'll draw the double team. Back for Thompson, who found himself with space as the defender slid up. Good Look opportunity here. Mitchell Armstrong had it stolen, trying the dunk, and they get the rebound, and Dudamain will score. You know, it's, it's fitting that Dudamain is the one to finish that off because he really made that play, you know, no one stays to support the ball for St. Catharines. They leave one guy, quick double team, force a turnover. You know, Finley Thompson gets a good look, doesn't quite finish it, but Tudemain's right there for the rebound. You know, that's that's three or four turnovers that Mimico's caused in just trying to get the ball up the floor now. It's, it's clearly a point of focus for them. Yeah, that's a great call. Dudamain getting the strip on the crease and Finley Thompson the beneficiary, but it's Dudamain who puts it in. Shots on goal in-house right now, reading 9-2, six and a half minutes in, in favor of Mimico, who are up 2-1. to one. That's a big deficit early on. 
Bryce accordingly controlling the face off now. Now on the outside, Thompson quickly back out there. Brody Kaskinet for Moyer. Carson Moyer has Sykes in the middle. Can't get it there though because Ben Doherty's in his face. Now back for Thompson, low shot. Patty Ole rattling around there. Right around the right fist. Now down floor, oh boy. <laughs> Short hopped in on Hrushka who I don't think was ready for that either. That or couldn't see it. Sun's starting to move. Yeah, St. Catharines needs a possession here. They've, they've turned it over going back to the power play. Turned it over probably five or six times now, just getting the ball up the floor. They, they need to play some offense. Well, it won't be on this set as Carson Moyer steps into a shot and rips the third goal in behind Austin Patty. I mean, that's what happens coming out against a tired defense. You got repeat possessions, a bunch in a row, and, and you know, one slips by. And that is a short lease for Austin Patty, who will be replaced by Oliver Vanyo. Seen this a couple times with Patty already this season. This is about the fourth game that, that I've seen where Patty's been replaced early on. He goes 725, allowing three goals off 11 shots. Yeah, that seems more like a way to kind of slow the game down without taking a timeout and just kind of give your team a reset, maybe wake them up a little bit. I don't, I don't know if you could really blame any of those three on the goalie. Faceoff bounces all the way back in Athletics territory where Davis Longlaid will corral it. Hard hit there for Armstrong against the far boards. Carson Robbins, he'll pass far side, ties Stainhouse with it now. Gavin Howard, the last one off the bench, as there's 10 left of the shot clock. Howard, all alone in front, a number of moves to get one back here for St. Catharines. You know, that's, that's a motion that a lot of teams have in the book, right? Some teams call it rattlesnake, pass down to the low guy, middle guy picks the high guy, and he slides right underneath, and they do it really well there. Get right on top of the crease, and, and he does a great job of, of getting across the middle of the goal. He's got space, and he takes it and he gets rewarded with a goal. Great play there by Gavin Howard. Howard, the second goal of the game now for St. Catharines. Off what is showing four shots. As Peyton McIntosh wins the face off cleanly. Back for Nathan Fear and the Athletics will push forward once again. Off the bench, Webster. Put it down into the corner. No shot there for LaFave. So far side for Keaton Zavitz. Zavitz will go behind the net. Having to climb the ladder to bring it down back. They go for LaFave, a bouncer in on Hershka, who makes the save and accordingly will get the rebound out of harm's way. Mark Waters. I believe from Aurelia, if I was told correctly, grew up playing Mimico Minor and has just been reacquired here and has bucked up. We'll send it in the corner for Cascanet. And a low shot from Waters will get it through Vanyo. Yeah, just a nice release here by Waters, shooting it right off the ball movement. Late in the shot clock, they had to shoot one and puts one on goal and sometimes good things happen. Waters just kind of a sneaky part of this Mimico offense sort of gets lost a little bit but that huge size that he brings in there along with Justin Lee really complements what they try and do offensively. These battles off the face off have been awesome to watch so far. Well they're only gonna get fiercer as the night goes on I feel and no surprise there is Aaron Taguri in the middle of it. <laughs> I know you played with his brother, earned the name Pitbull for a reason, and there's a couple more coming through the pipeline. Yep, he looks and plays exactly like his brother. All the way around the horn here for St. Catharines. Another possession late in their shot clock, though under five now as they put it behind the net. Spinning and firing is Webster, and Hrushka not sure where it was, was just going to hold his ground as it was caught under the left armpit. 
Halfway point of the first period. 4-2, Mimico with the lead. Alex Roussel back for Thompson. His shot off the right shoulder of Vanyo. Bo Columbus will run into the rebound. Thompson's had a couple good looks here. You get the sense he's kind of starting to find the, the range a little bit. St. Catharines probably wants to tighten up a little bit on him. You don't want to let a guy like that get going. Kind of surprised they're not so far with Peshko out of the lineup. Again, two players that Steve Toll is very, quite familiar with as that shot goes off the helmet of Addy Dwyer. They were both on that Minto team you were on, were they not? Peshko? Uh, he just, just missed us. Feels like some of these players with the couple years off have been in this league for about eight seasons. Bounce shot here for Carter Akersey. Gets through the legs and the athletics are within one. Just how the coaches teach it right there. High to low, right through the, uh, through the five hole. Good movement. You see that St. Catherine switches the floor a few times, gets the ball, you know, across the, the floor, makes the defense turn their heads. And, you know, you get a good release off that, and sometimes it goes in. So a Kersey pulling the home side within one as his faceoff rolls away from Reed Kurtz. Over to the far side. Kurtz recovers in a collision there between him and Race. And the Mimico drop in will bring it down. Good little pushback here from St. Catharines, and that thing could have got away from them a little bit at 3-1. We'll get a pushback, they're right back in this thing. Well, and you called it too with the goalie change, not necessarily right. so much on Patty as it was to perhaps wake up the rest of the bench and seems to have worked here. At least two of those other times I talked about, St. Catharines came back to win. Here's Gavin Howard, spins away back up top for Stainhouse off the end boards. Another quick shot and full splits here for Hrushka. Where's the ball underneath and in front of the goal line? Nice save there. Waters over center and pass right into the stick of Davis Longlade and He'll bring it over center for St. Catharines gains possession. You know, that's a good example of how these teams kind of want to play the same way, right? St. Catharines giving Mimico a little taste of their own medicine there, really pressing it hard in the in the offensive zone. And with the new rules this year, you only have uh, eight seconds to get it over. So, you know, you can make a play, hold a guy up. You, you, you got a good chance of causing a turnover. A Kersey looking for Stainhouse. That'll bounce away. And Mimico does that so well in their home barn, where we'll be on Friday. For game number two of the Crombie Cup, it's an 8 p.m. start time here on the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League's YouTube channel. Sykes looked off Thompson, took only the shot off righty, a defender. Only, only one righty on the floor here, so they get to Finney. He's got a lot of room to work here. Well, they yeah. did, and he passed right back to Dudamain quickly. Good eyes, partner, I think. Yep. St. Catherine saw the same thing, and Finley Thompson had other ideas. You know, Dudeman just does the little things well, right? He gets one goal off of a, a great play, causing a turnover, and another goal off a, a simple, you know, kind of front front cut, front swing. And uh, good look by, by Thompson, and then, you know, just a great finish, great off-ball movement leads to goals. Dudamain second of the game makes it 5-3. Finley Thompson picking up his second assist here of this first period. Nearing seven minutes to go is Brody Kaskinet. We'll walk towards the faceoff dot. Shoveling it back for Aiden McDonnell. Now here's Thompson again. A shot around Ben Doherty shaking out the hand afterwards. Wonder if that caught a piece of the glove as the shot went wide into the corner. Doherty's still out there, however, as Moyer circles around the corner. Back for Justin Lee. Was looking for Thompson momentarily on the carpet, but now 
Finley Thompson will take it to the net. Thompson out in front, everyone left Lee alone, and wow. the shot there handled by Vanyo and Lee had to look skyward. What a save by Vanyo there. That, that looked like a sure, a sure goal. Julian Rice will bring it out the far side. Switching hands, trying to get away from Hudson Thompson. Brother of Finley, both the younger brother of the mayor of Mimico, Tanner Thompson. Here's Keaton Zavitz. Five of the shot clock as Zavitz tried to get it through. Ferris had the stick tied up of Webster there and no time for a shot from the Athletics. Pushing ahead now, trying to get the turnover again. Might open space for Reed Kurtz. They're streaming quickly off that St. Catherine's bench. Here. Kurtz, due to me in the last one, laid off the bench. Buckta. Low shot from Waters. Bounces off the end boards. This is going to go all the way out and over center for the over and back violation. Dudeman was wide open there on the back, back pipe. They just didn't see him. Webster, flip pass from Stainhouse. Working it through Robbins into the corner. Lefebvre, a shot opens up. And he takes it into the stick. There of Hrushka who threw it into the corner. Here's Stainhouse now. He'll skip a shot in on Hrushka, trying to drive back into his crease. He'll get a second chance at it. And recovered, though, by Liam Ferris. It's probably a little bit of an early shot off of, you know, they just kind of earned themselves a reset, a second possession. They probably want to work that one a little bit deeper. Here's Sykes with space on the far side. Spikes will spit away as Moyer was there to set the screen. Sykes shot. What did that hit before it went out? Kind of took an awkward hop, and they award possession back to St. Catharines. Great defense there. Didn't catch who, what number that was for St. Catharines, but great on-ball defense. Swim move here from Zavitz. Will back away and using that X position a lot. He'd field the X position anyways. Is St. Catharines here in this period. Haven't seen that a lot from them this season. As Kurtz now getting it up for Ethan Brown. Dudemain spins off pressure sidearm looking for the first period hat trick and Roussel taken down after the whistle will be my guess is delay a game here but regardless power play for Mimico. Yep 1-0 oh on power plays already. Look to uh, look to go 2-0 oh here. It'll be Finley Thompson up top. Kaskinet on the left. They've got Bucked down on the crease. So far, just Kaskinet and Thompson now switching off the top ball, rolling. Oh, I don't think it ever got there. I don't think that went in, but that was about as close as it could have been to and not going in. Back the other way. Cameron Pack got caught up to it. It looked like a two on one developing for St. Catharines, but. In front of that Mimico bench, their defense. You know, a bit of a non-traditional play there, having setting a pick for Thompson to come over onto, you know, his non-traditional side of the floor. Usually you only run that if you have a guy who you, you think can, you know, create a shot from that angle. And, you know, it almost went in. And, you know, same thing on the other end. Stainhouse taking on three players. Ty Stainhouse burst onto the scene in that semifinal game last year. The Diving goal in the first period. It's Thompson what a cross save. floor, a quick what a stick save. to Dudemain and Vanyo again, nicely to his left. Low shot, Thompson. That one gets through. In and out quickly. I didn't see it go in. You know, speaking of uh, non-traditional, not many guys go low to high in, in box across, but. Thompson just paints that top left corner. Heard it bounce off of Vanyo, but. It is the sixth goal of the period for Mimico, 6-3. And Sykes picks up the assist. 
on 21 shots showing here in the period for Mimico. Well on their way to another 60. Here's Moyer taking flight and that's the difference between Junior A and NLL. The feet have to stay out of the cylinder and I think you could take two calls there. The dive in the direction of the goaltender and possibly the feet crossing that cylinder line. Stainhouse working far side. He'll get it back for Howard. Already with a goal in this game. Now outside for Christian Lefebvre in towards the crease. And rebound up for grabs, bouncing over a number of players. What a move by Lefebvre there. A little left to left shimmy shake. Almost went in too. Kurtz will pick it up. A long way to go though to clear this center line. And had to rush it looking for Ethan Brown. And that could cause the turnover here down in the corner. This is on Mimico's clock. And it will indeed be Ben Doherty to pick it up. We saw Doherty take a shot off the hand earlier in the period, so good to see him staying in the game. Yeah, Doherty came right out the box there, right when he got on the floor, rushed right up, made that pass difficult, just great recognition. Seems like an easy play at the end, but really good IQ the whole way to make it happen. Here's St. Catharines again. Howard out to the outside. A lot of room and space. Here to work for on that far side as the low shot comes from Zavitz. Bounces off of Hrushkin up out of play. He shot around his defender there and you could hear it in the whole building. Webster for Howard. Howard went one on one. Mimico picked it up nicely. Now the screen for Howard in front, spinning, firing. Low shot there from Robbins. Rattled around the wickets of Hrushka as we near the last minute of play in the first. Yeah, I think Robbins probably had more time than he realized there. He kind of got rid of it quickly. He probably had time to kind of make a move on the goalie there. Dudamain gets it back after bringing it in on possession, and there will be the first period hat trick. Yeah, it feels like we've been calling his name a lot here, and that's kind of the third different way he scored here. He's got a rebound, scored a cut, and then. Nice little twister here from, from Dudeman. Setting up for a big game again in the absence of Isaiah Moran Weeks, Jonathan Peshko. Two of the top goal scorers on this Mimico roster. You know, by, by my count, Dudeman only came in with four goals, so almost totaled his, his, huh. career, his, uh, his season output in, in one period here. In the last minute, 7-3 Mimico and both teams with two timeouts. As Thompson will push it up for Moyer. Waters coming off the bench now. 15 on the shot clock. Krushka still in the net as Thompson turns and fires. That one off the foot of Davis Longlade, who's struggling to hop one-footed off the floor. Soak that right off the ankle. St. Catharines will turn it over and I think call timeout. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll uh, take the time, set up a six on five play here. Uh, most likely try to take it down, take the clock down right to the end and then get one at the end. Gives us a chance to remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel here where you'll get a notification of our next home game or our, our next game of the week, sorry, here in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. It will be in Mimico on Friday, game number two of the Crombie Cup which Mimico currently holds. I believe they've won three of four. And the Toronto Beach is winning 14-12 in the first game of that home and home total point affair. So it'll be a good one at Mimico Arena if you're in the area. Jonathan and I will be there again, along with our JVI crew. Can't wait, should be a great game. Uh, wear shorts, that's, that's uh, it's gonna be a hot one. <laughs> If the weather report is to believe hot one there tonight as well, but thankful for the air conditioned facility here in St. Catharines. So here we go. Final 12 seconds. Extra attacker is on. They work it into the corner here for Howard. Howard gets it back in. They had Hrushka moving to the wrong side. He'll hold his ground right over top of the ball. And that last second shot nearly 
snuck through, but it will be a 7-3 Mimico first period. Yeah, I'm not sure if the play there was for the ball to come back to Howard, but you know, good read, got it right back to him, got a good look off at the end of the, at the end of the shot clock here, and Hruska just kind of squeezed it. Yeah, good save, good save there by the Mimico goalie. <laughs> Looks like Howard was celebrating the goal, but sat there on the line and not to be. We're in St. Catharines for the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week presented by the JVI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. We'll take a timeout and be back with the second period in about 10 minutes.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League broadcast game of the week are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org. As we bring you back inside Canada Games Park, my mistake going to break. Mimico has the two goal lead in the Crombie Cup. 14-12, that, that win at Ted Reeve Arena in game number one. Inexcusable. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'll go, I'll go home if, if, if you want me to. I mean, you live in Mimico. That might be the worst thing you could do right now. <laughs> I'm, but, not, I'm not allowed to yeah, go you home. Might have, you might have to stay away for I'm, a bit. I'm not allowed to go home. Shot from the outside as teams have switched ends here for period number two. All the, excuse me, that's Austin Patty back in there, it looks like. Look out. Oh. It's uh, Julian Race there makes a great move. I think he could have just bounced it right in. I think he had an open net there. St. Catherine's looking far side now. Ty Steinhouse low shot. Patty making the run to the bench. And as we get a delayed penalty call. Great move by 71 Julian Race there. Go right in on breakaway. Might have left one on a goal on the table, though. And Lucas Dudemain goes off for the ever-popular lacrosse hooking call. Here, 50 seconds into the second period. St. Catharines down by four. Looking to get a good start here to this second on their power play. Ty Steinhouse in the corner, getting it back up top for Keaton Zabitz. Through Webster. Down on the crease. Comes back for Steenhouse. Back for Webster again and in the back of the net. Webster's a smooth player. That was just a great release. I think uh, Mimico Golden Ruska thought he was going low and just kind of dropped his shoulder. Almost a little bit of a leaner there. Dropped his shoulder and just ripped it in the top left corner. That's a pretty slick finish there. Webster's second of the game comes on the power play. I want to say first power play of the game. I don't think Mimico took a penalty in that nope. first period. That's what I had too. I think all three power plays we've seen in the game now have scored, right? Yep, I've got that here as well. Pretty simple message there. Got to stay out of the box. Due to Maine. Late in the Mimico shot clock is Brody Caskinet. Will run into it. Some yelling from that St. Catharines bench is oh. Mimico just beat the shot clock and then Finley Thompson shoveled it off the post. I think one thing you'll see from Mimico here in the second period is, you know, everyone or at least a lot of guys playing offense and defense. It won't be kind of the OD that you're used to from other teams. You'll see basically all the players getting up and down. So obviously they want to do it in the first period, but in the second period especially, Mimico really wants to turn up the tempo of this game. Nathan Fear held the ball against the boards over on the far side, or was held against the boards for quite some time, and Mimico eventually able to here. pop it free. Shot from Hudson Thompson. Enough to reset the shot clock. Still fighting over the loose ball though, as it will be picked up by Ben Doherty. Doherty, a couple swim moves to try and elude. Sykes is now passing here for Zavitz. Good example here, you see Sykes back on defense. Didn't see that much in the first period, but here in the second period again, they'll look to kind of get this game going here. Trying to poke this ball three is Addy Dwyer and gets it up here for Garcia. Garcia, hold down. Uh, yeah, I didn't think there was any chance that was going to count. They are in the crease. I think we're going to get a penalty though. There was a penalty coming on the hold. Boy, that was almost a Sports Center top 10 there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost made that work. I don't know. Yeah, I think he, yeah he's yeah, on the ground. Yeah, no, I he's think the that freeze frame, he's down there now too. But Wow, what an effort though. Mimico will go to their third power play of the game, scoring twice already, like you said. 
Mark Waters and Lucas Dudamine. Wow. Power play goals in that period as this one bounces up and into the Mimico bench. Going off the defender, quick restart there from Sykes to find Thompson. And this could turn into a breakaway for Zavitz. As Hrushka came out of the net to be the closest. St. Catharines wanted the delay game there against Lane Hrushka. But yeah, that was close. I, I was wondering if they're going to call that. I have seen less things sent off to the box, especially since that rule made its way here to Junior A. But for now, it still remains a Mimico power play. As bucked up. Chasing Lefebvre into nice. the corner. Now joined by Reed Kurtz, who will pop the ball free and head back down floor. You know, Kurtz just seems like a guy whose name we're calling a lot, and it's always a good time, good thing that seems like when we call his name, ground balls, or loose balls rather, you know, face-off wins, good defensive plays, comes up a lot here. Reed Kurtz, formerly from KW, and another trade acquisition of Mimico, I believe in the offseason before the season started. As Finley Thompson will take it up top, Sykes turns and fires. And the save from Patty. Breakaway here for St. Catharines. You called it Julian Race. Couldn't quite catch up. Steve Toll has got the arms high. Slow things down and can't quite finish off all of this power play. About 25 seconds left in that and 12 left to go on their shot clock. Yeah, Mimico might get one more shot here, but St. Catharines will take this all the way down and basically kill the rest of the penalty. Race the jump shot, fired out off the hip. It looked like of Justin Lee. He shrugged it out and Lee's feeling it on his way to the bench. Here's Finley Thompson for Lucas Dudeme. Mark Waters is up top, uh -oh. cuts through now just as the penalty expires and it bounces right to Cameron Pack. Pack on the run, a number of fakes and Hershka goes with him. It was a crease violation anyways. Moyer for Waters. Mimico got away big time with one there. That's basically the last thing you want to do is throw a pass coming back up towards your own goaltender. Bounce shot from Roussel on the far side comes straight back here. That's nearly a textbook crease dive from Carson Moyer going around the crease, but the shot never made it. As now St. Catharines back to work. Here's Gavin Snow. Another trade pickup from KW. Defender falls right in front of Howard, who gets the shot away, and Hrushka there to make the save. 7 4 Mountaineers. With six minutes gone here in the second period. Big hit in front of the timekeeper's box. Brody Kaskinet didn't like the Mitchell Armstrong took him into the timekeeper's box and Kaskinet will sit for the retaliation slash. Yeah, pretty similar there to the to the, uh, the penalty against St. Catharines in the first you know first period there. So you know she's consistent there, but just a, a needless slash behind the play. And those are the ones as a coach kind of drive you nuts. Shots of. Evened up nearly as 27-21 now in favor of Mimico. As Zavitz sidestepped in looking for that big shot and lets to pass instead. Now it works to Stainhouse rolling around in the feet there of Hrushka before Mimico get it out. Here's Kurtz. Big whack from Nathan Fear. Kurtz will circle the crease now. Now cut back, but... Met by the double team as Michael Wilson comes in. Kurtz recovers the loose ball, drops it again, and Kurtz still chasing. Kurtz is going to take this entire shot clock himself. Great hustle there. And that gets the sticks out over on the Mimico bench. Watch out for Mimico here. We got Sykes and, and Thompson playing the top of this penalty kill and Lee on the back end. So, you know, basically their whole power play playing the penalty kill as well. So, Look for those two guys to really try to break off this whenever this shot happens and try to get advantage going the other way. Justin Sykes does lead the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League in shorthanded goals. Came in with five, if I'm not mistaken. Big hit there. 
as Ferris sent Jackson Webster flying just as the ball arrived on scene. 40 seconds to go in the power play as Thompson rushed in and took the shot. Comes right back from Moyer. Again, Mimic can kill most of the, uh, the rest of the penalty off here. 13, now 10 on their shot clock with 20 to go in the penalty. As Moyer keeps it high, Finley Thompson will make the change to get Aaron Tagori back on defense. Moyer will just dump it into the corner as the horn sounds. Eight minutes gone here in the second period. Final 10 seconds of this St. Catharines power play. See if they've got one more shot. Zavitz far aside. Was Webster taking it all the way deep in close. Hattrick watches on for Jackson Webster. And as Kaskinet came out of the box and is. headed down floor. Broadcasting's easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you said it. Hattrick opportunity. Kind of lulls him to sleep here. It says we're slowing it down. Just kidding. No, we're not. Puts it right in the back. I'm not sure if that deflected off something or looked like a little bit of a kind of a non-traditional release there. I don't know if you got checked or if the ball deflected, but either way, it went. Okay. Great look there from, from Zav. It's 91. Just couldn't get it to go. Nice save by Hroska in the goal. I apologize. We understand we lost a stream there for a second, but we are back with 10 minutes left here in the second period. 7-5 the score in favor of Mimico. Inside Canada Games Park. Starting to become a bit of a drought here for Mimico. It's been over 10 minutes since, they, since they've scored. get another penalty here as a trip comes to St. Catharines. I believe Michael Wilson headed to the box for the second time tonight. I mean, not the worst penalty in the world. Mimico player, Ethan Brown on a breakaway there. Not, not the worst penalty to take. Take your chance at the power play. What a save. That's Patty making back-to-back -back saves. But Dudamain comes Great. back with the ball. Great look there from Sykes and a you know a good shot, a good good quick stick. Got it out quick. Just a oh, great save with the stick. And Patty on top of it again. Basically a full court press here from Mimico too, trying to force a quick turnover. Sykes in the crease. You know, a crease call, that's exactly what they're looking for. Basically a full court press. You know, trying to look, create a turnover and go the other way. Great pass by Thompson. And you know, seemingly a nice finish, just stepped in the crease. Big tie up far side, Curtis Buck to taking nice down job. Cameron Pack. Who lands on top of the ball and will hand it back to Mimico. Pack getting up slowly here. Great play by Buck though. We've seen that a couple times from him now. Blair Ferguson's had enough of one of the benches. This Mimico power play is pretty good variety. We've seen, you know, a couple different looks and now we're seeing Sykes at the top and Thompson to the shooter. Again. Thought they may have gone hidden ball play there with Thompson and Dudamain right tight to the loose. He is, it's off the end wall and one, two, three for Patty. Dragging the rebound back into his own crease. Yeah, Austin Patty's really keeping him in this game right now. Probably 
six, seven shots on that power play alone. Power play has expired. Wilson back on the floor. Steve Toll on one bench, Troy Cordingly on the other. A bit tough to figure out which one that Blair Ferguson was upset with. Here's Roussel to the outside. Thompson, hard cross crease pass. What a shot from Moyer. Oh my. You know, Moyer shot this thing so close to his defender that he actually kind of smoked his defender with his stick. Just kind of stuck his arms out, tried to reach it, and just clanked it off the far pipe. That's a goal scorer's goal. This is like the perfect angle where our camera is to see where this ball goes. Like, there's no room there. Yeah, and we're looking at what, you know, at what Moyer's seen himself. So he's shooting for a spot he can't even see, right? And that's, you know, that's the game of inches that, that this is a lot of the time. So just a great finish. And it's the old thing you're taught as a little kid. Your stick has eyes. Just reach it out, try to get it out, try to increase your angle. And when it goes piping in, it works out pretty well. If you missed it last week, the Minto Cup will take place in Brampton at the end of August. We'll have all the action right here on the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League's YouTube channel as we take you all the way to the Minto Cup. More information on that at the CAA Centre in Brampton. As the season rolls on, our thanks to Darren Farmers of Ontario and all the sponsors who are going to make that a great event to be at. Jonathan Donville in the booth tonight, along with myself, Matthew Carrick, and our JVI Sports Network crew. He knows a thing or two about Minto Cups. A ring and an MVP played in a couple. Yeah, Brampton's a great, uh, I was lucky enough to play in a Minto in Brampton. It's a great city to host it in, you know, right in the, the kind of the center of the Ontario lacrosse community. And I, I can't wait. It should be a really fun event. Ball brought back by Zavitz. He went all the way around the world and fired it high and wide. Yeah, you, you can hear Mimico coach uh, Troy Cordley is telling the guys, get out, get out, get out. They want to they want to get out. They want to play the ball. They want Again, they got a lot of big athletes. They got a lot of 50-year guys. They're a pretty old team. Certainly a lot of old in St. Catharines. They want to get out and impose their will on the ball and get this game kind of sped up. Penalty coming here to Ben Doherty as he took down Roussel. And Mimico is going to get extended possession here. Getting Hrushka to the bench. Sykes is the extra attacker as Moyer finds Dudemain in the corner. Dudemain from Moyer to Sykes in front. And the ball movement leads to an extra attacker goal here for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Sykes was the, the sixth guy there. Just kind of got lost on the, in the inside. You know, sometimes you're, you, you worry too much about a play and you just don't kind of mark up. And he was open here. As you can see on the monitor right now, he was open. Just they couldn't kind of find him for a sec. Then finally spot him in a pretty pretty slick little touch pass there from Moyer. Gets in a nice little twister to finish it off. You know, it's uh, the oldest cliche in the cross. It's a game of runs, but, it, you know, it's true. And St. Catherine's got to be careful this thing doesn't, you know, they, they had a good push after the, after the period. And then two quick ones here by Mimico. There's six minutes left. St. Catharines needs to, you know, get one back or at least kind of slam the door shut, make sure this thing doesn't get away from them before the third. Bo Columbus picking up the face-off was by far, I think, the top face-off man in last year's mini tournament at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. This is a huge pickup for the Athletics to get Columbus at the dot, and that's how you get runs going. I know a lot of the Halifax Thunderbirds talk about that with Jake Withers as their draw man, especially their offensive unit, Cody Jamison and those guys that, you know, they almost they almost know they're going to be out on the floor. Yep, goaltending and faceoffs. It's kind of the two ways you go on a run and two ways you get kind of runs against you. Here's Moyer. He'll put it behind the net for Thompson. Finley Thompson taking it out himself, shovels the shot back towards the net, and it bounces just wide. Aiden McDonnell hustling to get out there to counterattack Gavin Snow. You know, we, we've doing seen the them, same for St. Catharines. Sorry. No, it, all good. We've seen them go behind the net a few times in, in the first period. St. Catharines kind of lost, lost the man. That was a lot better there. Just kind of leave him back there. He can't score back there. Again, he's not going to dive like they you'd see maybe in the NLL. Just let him come to you. Nice job defensively there. 
especially when you recognize that is Finley Thompson back there. Right. No disrespect to the rest of the offensive line, but as we keep saying, no Peshko, no Moran Weeks in this Mimico offensive set tonight. Under five to play in the second. Mimico hanging on to a four goal lead. They've ticked the shots up again as well. Now up to 38-24, their advantage. Yeah, those power plays really help in that, you know, that instance. You got two minutes where you go, you know, seven, eight shots to zero, right? And that's kind of how you, you kind of sway the difference there. Three or four straight saves in on tight on the crease with Patty as well. It was get up pretty quickly. Here's Kaskinet spinning away from pressure. Threw it away Maybe from Taguri. They here. haven't crossed center yet. And well aware that that was Mike or Mitchell Armstrong, excuse me. And yeah, great play by Armstrong there. Great hustle. He saw it, saw it the whole way, knew the rule, knew it, you know, knew he could make a play and just got right across. That made in, a good play. That internal clock, Jonathan. Yeah, and for sure. I don't know how it wasn't the eight count, but they do get possession anyways. Is now working out from behind the net again, Ty Stainhouse. Kaskinet, this one will bounce towards Ferris, who I think heard footsteps coming. and Going to have numbers here off the bunch. Reached for it and allowing St. Catharines an opportunity. Zavitz. Right into Webster's wheels house, it looks like. Gets it back for Zavitz. He'll get the rip. And a penalty. Ty Stainhouse will get a retaliatory call now. As he took an extra shot on Taguri. Yeah, I mean, what? that's what, the third or fourth one of those we've seen. A couple for each team, so they seem like they're pretty determined to only take one at a time. And that's a, that's a big call. Three minutes before the uh, the end of the period here. You know, this is a big moment in this game, for, especially for St. Catharines. They've got to slam the door shut here. Had some good looks. Didn't get a goal in that last possession, but they've had some good looks. Ball is getting across the middle of the floor. Shots off ball movement, those are the ones you're looking for. Finley Thompson, Justin Sykes into Dudamain, who's had the hot stick tonight. He'll go to Buckta this time, however. And Austin Patty, the even hotter stick. Yeah, especially here in this second. Nice uh, nice play design there from the Mimico coaching staff. Nice little set piece getting Buckta coming through. Kind of a double seal there. Get seal the low guy, seal the high guy, and, and come right through the middle. Double team spying Gavin Howard now. He'll pass it up to Carter Recursey, who scored earlier in the first period. Far side for Webster. On the run, sidearm shot. And hey, guys, it's a new building here. <laughs> nice new building at that, hit, too. Yeah, hit something on the far side. Get some blinds behind us. We'll be, we'll be even more ready to go. Standing room only. They say seats and standing room, 1,500 capacity. As look out here as Zavitz could be off to the races. Yeah! Keaton Zavitz, the rebound and the run, and it's 9-6. Yeah, you know, it, it sounds like a broken record in this game because we're saying a lot of the same themes for, the both, for both teams. You know, Zavitz is... You know, one of the leading scorers for St. Catharines, one of their best players offensively, playing the top of the penalty kill. If you got a guy who can hang in there defensively and then has the skills going the other way, that's what happens. Bit of a sloppy play by Mimico, letting him get over the top, and, you know, that's what you want. You're looking, you know, it's been a struggle for them to score goals so far. You're looking for an easy one. That's as easy as it gets, getting one of your best players on a wide open breakaway. Short-handed as well as Stainhouse still in the box. Look off to my right. And another Stainhouse mark in the building as well. Here's Finley Thompson. To the left, now to the right, where Sykes is. On the crease, Finley Thompson. He's a lefty, that would have been a dunk. Look there out. for Sykes, off the end boards again. This time, Julian Race decided not to go after it. A minute and a half left here in the period, and St. Catharines can take all the rest of the 20 seconds. They used a, power, a timeout, excuse me, in that first period. Mimico has both of theirs remaining. Spin back move from Christian Lefebvre, nearly took it right to the cage. 
Race is on as Gavin Howard got to the loose ball first, but it'll be Mimico with numbers picking it up. Justin Lee. Another Lucy there by Courage. How many times have we said that tonight? Yeah. Thompson. Final minute here is Finley Thompson. Tried the pick and roll with Lee and couldn't get it past the body of Mitchell Armstrong who picks up and heads down floor, but Moyer. Wow, great hustle by Moyer there. Kind of snipped it out right from right from the other end and got right back and that might have been a break if he didn't get back. We near 30 seconds remaining in the period. Zavitz far side, hard shot Webster. Wow. That release is really, seems to be giving Horosko a bit of trouble here. You know, again, it almost looks like a little bit of a leaner. He's kind of his, yeah, his right shoulder drops a little bit, and then he kind of tries to keep the ball in the top left, and whatever it is, he gets the goalie thinking he's going lower and just smokes it in the top left corner. Webster's fourth. Pulls St. Catharines within two. That's, I believe, as close as they've been this game. As we're in the final 30 seconds here, Bo Columbus brings down the faceoff, and it will be timeout. St. Catharines. Last shot here, 25.3. I'm giving it to Webster. I don't know if that's a good call or not, but I'm giving it to Webster. Yeah, I mean, goals are goals. Don't get me wrong, but for a guy like Webster, seeing the ball go in the top corner like that, it's a good little wind in the sails, too. It's a sign that, you know, the goalie's not reading your shot, you're hitting your spots. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think they would probably go to Webster here, but, you know, the Mimical coaching staff is probably thinking the same thing. So maybe a bit of a decoy play, try to get it to Webster and back to someone like Zavitz on the other side. But regardless, they'll hold the ball here for, you know, at least 20 seconds, try to get something right at the end, and then they will be without a, their timeout for the third period as well. Yeah, another point to make there. This is the second and last one for St. Catharines. Mimico with two in the bag here as Troy accordingly sets up the defensive set. And it will be Austin Patty on the bench for the extra attacker. Webster we've got with four goals. Gavin Howard with one. Keaton Savitz, Carter Kersey for the Athletics tonight. So yeah and that, that power play Mimico had where uh, Zavitz ended up scoring the goal. You know you were looking at 9-5, maybe 10-5 at that point. Now two minutes later going into the break, it's 9-7 with a chance to make it 9-8. Just, again, game of inches, game of runs. Well, you called it at the time. It was a big spot in the game, and Athletics here with a chance to be one up. Quiet night so far for Ty Stainhouse as well. Number nine here on the right side. Webster's got the fun job here of being the, uh, the middle guy <laughs> on the six on five. Yep. And you're just holding it for 20 seconds. He might be too tired to take a shot after 20 seconds here. He'll certainly be motivated. Now finally gets some help in the middle. This is Webster from long range and off center. Rebound up for grabs. Stainhouse shot off of Kurtz. And there should have been extra time. Steve Toll. I think they're going to put time on the clock here. And yeah, there was. What do we got? We're at zeros as well, but. That shot definitely went out of play before the horn sounded. We'll see what they put back on. Good job there's no door between the penalty box and St. Catherine's bench because Steve Toll would have busted it down. One and a half. Six on five though, they got the extra guy, so they'll have a chance to get a good look here. They're already started the play and time's not up yet. So here Look we for go. A quick Adam. pass up to Webster here and basically a free shot. Oh. Well, you called it, and it goes right off the bucket of Justin Lee, who's down to a knee. But the important part there is that Mimico leads 9-7 as he gets back up and makes his way off the floor along with both teams. Two-goal game after two here, Jonathan. Picked a good one for your first, eh? Yeah, no, it's been a great <laughs> game. Should be a really exciting third period. I think for St. Catharines, obviously, like that's a strength for Mimico the second period with trying to get the athletes up and down. So I think you'll take that score after after two uh, periods. A reminder to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Our next game is Friday. 
The schedule is wrong on the websites. It's an 8 p.m. start in Mimico for the game two of the Crombie Cup. I think I'm correct this time in saying that Mimico's got the lead, 14-12, the win at Ted Reeve the first time. A two-game total point affair. 9-7 here, though, as Mimico leads St. Catharines. Both teams with nine wins. Great third period coming your way in about 10 minutes' time.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League broadcasts are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Cup campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org as we thank them for their support for the second year running. Elsewhere in the league tonight. Yeah. Elsewhere in the league tonight, the... Got a quick penalty coming up here right off the faceoff. So St. Catharines will get a chance to run a quick six on five play, which they just drew up so they can kind of run the same play. And then they'll be going right to the man advantage here. They gotta get their guys on the floor though. St. Catharines setting up. As the last man does get out now, ball nearly bounced right to Carson Robbins as we get the cross-checking call. A quick peek, it looked like Justin Lee came, oh there he is, Justin Lee taking the penalty. He came out after taking that shot off the helmet at the end of the period. Other, other game in the OJLL tonight, Orangeville Northman up on the Burlington Chiefs, 10-9. That was a 7-30 start, so we expect the final any time now. That would move Orangeville to seven and six if they can hang on. Burlington five and eight. Pair of nine win teams here tonight in the Athletics and Mimico. From the outside, Webster. Getting it back for Zavitz, the shot comes far side. Wow. Quick stick, Webster scores. You know, this starts with a good shot from, I believe that Steenhouse kind of goes with a twister far side and Pruska just kind of fights it off with the hand and then Webster's there to, to pick up the garbage. Man, oh man, have a night, Jackson Webster. We've got him for five now. You know, it's like that old Austin Matthews interview, right? Like, have you ever had the ball following you around like that? When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. You know, he, he wasn't the one to take the shot there, but he's already got four. He's feeling it. Ball comes right to him on the doorstep, slams it home. On the power play as well. Three power play goals for the Athletics here in the game. Christian Lefebvre spins away from pressure. And this is the Bo Columbus effect as he wins the face off and gives it back to the Athletics. As Zavitz bouncing in late in the shot clock. Nearly right in the stick of Carson Robbins. Lefebvre. Second possession here for St. Catherine. A chance to really wear down the defense. Third period, this is when it kind of starts to show. And the Athletics within one. Always seem to do that to these St. Catherine's teams just Think they're out of it, and then you look up a few minutes later, and ooh, <laughs> one goal maybe even tighter than that, but not that time as Lane Rushka held it just on the right foot. Carson Moyer, Lucas Dudemain. Moyer will keep it outside. Dudemain coming to set the screen. Moyer out in front, Roussel with the catch and the shot as he was getting hauled down. Dudamain goes then over top of Ben Doherty. Back for Thompson, finds his man on the run. Big hit there. Dudamain, collision with Columbus. And as Gavin Howard will start it back the other way. Hard shot. Hudson Thompson picks up the rebound on the Gavin Snow. Really, really smart pick there by, by Ty Steenhouse. Saw he was ahead of his of the ball carrier, just kind of set up a kind of a blockade and let his guy come and shoot right all over his back and over the screen. Really smart play there by nine. Webster for the fate. And a, a great play to, to, uh, to get the ball back for his team as well. This athletics team really kind of seems next man up mentality. We've seen Howard go off, we've seen Excuse me, Clay Scanlon not in the lineup tonight. We've seen him go off. Stainhouse has his game. Tonight it's Webster's turn. 9-8, a one goal game. Three minutes gone here in the third period. Waters to the outside for Sykes. Sykes will go to Brody Kaskinet and now for Finley Thompson. Back far side for Moyer. Sykes cutting through the middle. No room for Moyer to get it there. 
Moyer takes it himself. Was gonna say stayed out of the crease, but Sean Grenier with the better look. Yeah, ball's got to move here for Mimico. Kind of got stuck in one stick there. And sometimes, you know, those aren't always the ball carrier's fault. Sometimes he doesn't have an outlet, and it's a sign that guys aren't moving off the ball as much too. But the ball has to move here a little bit better. A Kersey back up top for Stainhouse. I was ready to credit the Athletics defense, to be quite honest, but. Well, say yeah, I mean, same thing, right? If it's good offense or uh, bad offense, good defense, you know, hard to tell sometimes. Either way, Mimico will work in again. Curtis Buckta. Ford Thompson on the outside. Here's Finley Thompson. Finds room, takes it to the cage and the save by Patty. Buxa picks up the rebound and Roussel coming off the bench will flip it back for Buxa. For Justin Sykes. Trying to return it back for Dudamain. It was over his head and Bo Columbus there to pick up the errant pass. He was open there, just needed a better ball. Columbus driven into the outside boards by Justin Sykes. Yet to mention older brother Matt Sykes, the assistant general manager and player development coach now for Mimico. As they're starting to add the alumni to the bench. Bukta in front around the back from Kurtz. Never got through Zavitz who drills Kurtz into the end boards. Just a split second late on the pass there from Bukta. He had him open earlier, didn't see him. By the time he got it there, he was kind of too far. Well, but. Bucktill will win it back at center, though, and yep. pass here for Moyer. It's a couple plays right near the center line for Mimico winning the ball and extending possession as Sykes had one in the most recent set. Kaskinet sidearm off the end boards. Back for Roussel, the shot. Wow. Rebound, Patty. <laughs> Another back-to-back -back sequence for Austin Patty. Tough start to the game for Patty, right? Ends up getting pulled, but it was seven. This game was seven to two, uh, seven, two or seven three after one period, and you know they really slammed the door shut here. The, Mimico had seven in the first, two in the second, Ooh. and zero now through six minutes of the third. And Patty, after a rough start, comes back in to start the second, and he's been lights out since then. Bit of an awkward collision there between Moyer and Fear. Looks like Moyer slowly making his way to the bench. Looks like he says, yeah, he's good to the trainer. And St. Catharines continues their possession. Robbins cross floor for Stainhouse. Ducks and drives. And no shot. It's going to bounce away here from everybody. And Krushka, look out. Big tie up here between Taguri and Stainhouse. It's due to me and brings it all the way outside. Kaskinet, cross for Sykes, fakes the shot, works off his defender, takes one now, and Patty will make the save, but St. Catharines comes away with the rebound, and it'll be Howard leading the charge back the other way. Yeah, this is a physical game, too, and, and all of the kind of in-between plays at the, at the benches and in the sub game and that kind of thing. It's a physical affair. To the cage, and too close there for a Kersey. Gets called for the crease violation with seven minutes gone here in the third. Still a one goal game, 9-8 in favor of Mimico who have led basically the entire way. Here's Thompson. Bukta takes two defenders in front of him. Thompson was hit late as Bukta picks up the rebound in the corner. Nifty pass to get it to Moyer on the far side as Thompson will go back to Bukta now. But, uh, and Moyer, that shot handled by Patty. Moyer was knocked down after shot was taken, and now. St. Catherine's got numbers here if they want them. Cameron Pack across center. They did not want them is the answer. <laughs> Apparently. As the Athletics will just wait to get their offensive unit on the floor. You know, kidding aside, St. Catherine deserves a lot of credit for how they've I was going to say, slow down the transition game. Maybe I should wait for the broadcaster jinx here. <laughs> that was Aaron Taguri trying to catch up, and he was home free, if not for Davis Longlade running in there first. Aside from a, um, a lapse or two in the second period, they've done a great job getting back and haven't let Mimico and their kind of big athletes get out and run in this game. 
And Mimico's really had to earn him at 5-on-5, five five, and that's proved to be a successful strategy for St. Catharines. Sykes and Moyer, now Dudeman and Moyer working that left side. Dudeman on the run. It's been a while since we've heard from him, but he's still here. Well, there it is, my first uh, broadcaster jinx. <laughs> You've officially made it, my friend. Just a nice top side move by Dudeman here. And looks like Patty, the goalie, thought he was going to try to bring it back short side. Kind of snuck it far side off the hip. Looks like he was kind of thinking his ball was coming back and just stayed on the far pipe. We've got Dudamain for four and Jackson Webster for five. Did we get a winner? Way to go. 50-50 winner here. 10-8 is the score. 46th shot of the game for Mimico to 35 now for St. Catharines. As Columbus and Kurtz. If I'm not mistaken, they were teammates last year in KW. And down and possibly hurt is Mitchell Armstrong. Gets up holding his back as St. Catharines takes the ball into Mimico territory. It's Julian Race. Nice play by Race there to get out of the double team. Out of the corner, always a good play to get it to Webster as we're now in sock trick watch for Jackson Webster. I'm not wearing any, that could be a problem. Here's Howard, penalty coming up here to Bryce Cordingly as he faces a pair of athletics in the corner. Ty Stainhouse gets up and gives it to Cordingly who goes down in the corner. Trying to even the numbers here as Mimico perhaps. Accordingly, still down. Didn't see what happened in that scrum in the corner, but looked like the initial penalty was coming to accordingly. I think we're just going to have the one original penalty there. Still can't really see it. It's a slash to Bryce accordingly who did get up and made his way off. That has been the kind of the trend all game, right? Yeah. Steenhouse was yep. on the wrong end of one of those, and then just on the right end, too. You got to give the officials some credit there. It has been consistent there. So here's the chance, perhaps, for St. Catharines. I know we're 40 ticks away from the halfway mark of this third period, but... Teams have started to dig in here in the third period. They go to Webster, who had the quick stick, tries to dive. And tried to dive from in behind. And a wide the open goal, goal there if he could have gotten it. Snuck it in. Man, what a sequence for Webster and, excuse me, for Lane Hershka. Here comes the double team in on Moyer. Moyer breaks all of that, takes it, and scores. Carson Moyer. What a goal here from Moyer. Takes on the double team, and then when the triple team comes, he says, sure, why not, one more. Great move, splits the double team. Nice finish. Wow. That's big breathing room for Mimico as well. First time, excuse me, second time we heard from Carson Moyer tonight. And that makes it a three goal game. Just moments ago, it seems it was a one goal cushion. That's a killer for St. Catharines. Big power play, you know, 10 minutes left to go in the game. You trying to get yourself within one, you don't expect to go down one more. And the leading team in shorthanded markers has Another one here tonight. Big pile up right in front of Hershka looking for this rebound. It's a big one and thought about putting the paddle on it and it's going to drag it free and it'll be a back in call as Aaron Taguri gets up from the pile limping but will stay on the floor. 
Yeah, Webster went back to the wall one more time there, trying to hunt that top left corner again. Mimco goaltender did a great job staying up on it, not dipping. Lane Hrushka, the last time we were on air, I said he was a Saskatchewan draft pick. He was drafted by Georgia, but now with Saskatchewan, and there it is, give him six for Webster. When you're hot, you're hot, I guess. Great shot, a little bit lower than his others. They kind of went top, top left. He drops this one kind of just over the left hip. But, man, he's got a smooth release, just a slick, slick finish. And Hrushka's just not picking up his shot today. Those couple little sidesteps from trying to catch the number there, Keaton Zavitz to get that top defender moving down as well and create the space. Three goals on the power play, part of six for Webster here tonight. If you're Mimico, you gotta think about just taking him completely out of the power play and making somebody else beat you. Here's Buck to lost the bouncing ball and the Athletics will get it back. Here with the Kersey off the bench. Under Got nine to play. Just shoot it. Pass to Lefebvre instead. Lefebvre will give to Stainhouse here. Stainhouse shot around his screen. Bukta will chase Stainhouse after the loose ball in the corner. Ty Stainhouse with it. Webster wants more of the shot there off the shoulder. It hit Hrushka high. And Mimico takes it the other way. Bukta. Nearly a breakaway, but quick off the bench with Bo Columbus. Webster almost got him again there. That that <laughs> that was fought off. Hidden ball play. Moyers faking like he's got it. It's up with Sykes, though. Finley Thompson will now play for Bukta. Bukta in front. Thompson wasn't even there. Let him and couldn't catch it, but nearly bounced it through Patty anyways. Stealing his, uh, his older brother Tanner's move there. Slipping the top guy. <laughs> Gavin Howard to the outside. Webster, no shot. There is Ethan Brown all over him. Brown giving Webster no space to shoot this time. Howard will, though. Rebound. What a save from Hushka. Wow. Webster's, what a save. Webster's had his number all night long. And he, perhaps in the biggest moment, Hushka. Swings the stick out and takes away number seven. You got a guy absolutely feeling it. Gets a gift of a rebound and then goaltender says, nope. See what Mimico, Mimico can do back the other way. Here's Thompson and Moyer. Five in the shot clock as Cascanet went down on the near side. Due to main shot through traffic. He's been the hot hand for Mimico tonight and that one skipped low on Patty. Under seven to play. The oohs and ahs from the crowd still buzzing from the last trip down the floor. Here's Howard. A lot of space here. Cross now for Lefebvre. Drilled after losing the ball and Aiden McDonnell had a word with the official as that got reset with about three seconds left in the shot clock. Zavitz pass too high for Howard. Lefebvre gets it off the boards. From a Kersey up top, a bit of a weak shot in there on Hrushka, who will save it in the crease. An outlet for Justin Lee, who flips it past the defender. And down in the corner, look out there as Lee into the back of Ben Doherty. St. Catherine's bench wants a penalty and not gonna get one out of it. Yeah, Lee's lucky to get away with one there. I thought so as well. Under six now to go in a two goal game. 11 9 Mimic Hill. Stainhouse around Sykes. Nice recovery by Sykes. Lays a few extra chops for good measure, but all three officials have their arms high for Hudson Thompson as a Kersey tried to go around the corner. And when all three of them put their arms up, you probably, good chance you're going to go sick. Yeah, St. Catherine's getting their chances here. You know, Mimico keeps going in the penalty box again and again in this third period, given what's so far been a lethal power play. You know, more chances, and 
you know, it's got to go to 33 here, right? To Webster. It's got to go to Webster. Mimic coach thinking the same thing. Well, Troy, Curious if we see some sort of a shutoff here. Troy accordingly just whistled to his defense and pointed right at Webster with two fingers. Yeah, anybody but 33 here. That's what Mimic coach saying. <laughs> Webster has it now for Zavitz. Stainhouse. A lot of room for Stainhouse here if he can We're step in the far in corner. One. Now Zavitz. Up it comes from all the way at the crease. It was Howard. And shoveling it towards the net was... Zavitz, hard collision there. Sykes and Stainhouse who have been all over each other here in this third period. Stainhouse will roll it to the far side. Still no shot as now Kurtz hard up after his man. Howard quickly to Stainhouse, high shot. Here's Webster. He's filled in on the rebound as Sykes came right through the hottest offensive stick on the floor. Got to earn him at this level. Webster's certainly done that tonight. Webster is going to start with the reset here. Five to play now in regulation. And Zavitz will get it across to Steenhouse. Sticks her out on the boards against in front of that Mimico bench. As they urge on their penalty killers. A minute ten left in the man advantage. Webster takes top spot. No look down in the corner for Gavin Snow. Forcing Grushka into a save. Rebound back for St. Catharines. Well falling. Steenhouse the shot. And in the crease. Will be called there against the Athletics. Can't ask for better looks for St. Catharines. That's exactly what you're looking for. A couple of great saves. But the message for St. Catharines has got to be keep going. Keep going. We're getting good looks. An eight second count here. A quick eight. As Ferris was close to center. And now Webster gets it back. And Moyer quickly all over him. St. Catharines guys are gassed here. I know it's power play, but a couple of tough resets <laughs> there. They're gassed. I was about to say Webster's played this entire minute Gotta and a half. Find the legs. Howard shoots and he'll get a reset here on Hrushka. And I was looking for Sykes who wasn't on the floor because as tired as that offense was, that was prime space for another shorty. Penalty about to expire. Casket in. Waiting up top, ball carrier is Moyer on the far side. The red head on the stick, red flash on the gloves as well. Moyer dancing around the corner to Casket at the shot clock. That's okay, Mimico will, will take that. They're just trying to hold the ball, get back to five on five. Three and a half minutes left here, so just trying to get their guys, get a little bit of a rest, and get to make sure their defense is ready to go for the stretch here. As we head down the stretch, we'll remind you that St. Catharines out of timeouts. Mimico still has two in the bag. Can use one here in the third period. Christian Lefebvre. Someone's lost a glove down there. I think it is Lefebvre. It's dangerous. And Ferris, the big tug there on Webster. And Webster not scoring, but he's drawn three penalties now here in the last, what, five minutes or so. Yeah, that's two minutes for a bear hug right there from uh, Ferris. <laughs> Something to keep in mind too with the, the new rules in, in Junior A, the eight second to get it over once the penalty is done, does change the end of game situations where the team that's winning can't just hold the ball on their own end. They yep. gotta advance it, they gotta get it up the floor. Chances for the, the, the team that's down to kind of stick around a little bit longer. So stick with us here folks, three minute warning. As Howard and Webster play catch with it near side. No look into the corner for a Kersey, has one. Got tied up with the ref there in the corner. As now Webster, back up top, low shot from Zavitz with 10 on the clock. In for Kurtz, eight count is already on. Moyer will clear that as he gets it across center. 30 seconds gone in the power play. Coach Toll is drawing something up for them on the bench right now. Expect a set piece here from St. Catharines coming the other way. Yeah, well, again, no timeouts here for the Athletics as Finley Thompson. Long range shot bounces off the end boards and everybody peels off to the bench. Webster, the first one out for St. Catharines. We'll see if that set piece is to get a shot from 33 or a decoy to someone else. Bit of a different setup here with. Going strong lefty. 
So three lefties on the floor. Webster through the middle. Back to that X spot behind the net. Takes the pass here from Lafave. Lafave up top. Howard, no shot. Stainhouse, low roller. That hit off Lee. Man, ice bath for Lee. After this game, up into the screening off the leg of Hrushka. And a quick restart. Howard for Stainhouse. In the corner, Zavitz. No look back for Howard. And Webster, the shot went back to that corner over that the shoulder, was, and he had it. That was labeled for the top corner. If not for the shoulder of Hrushka. Back for Zavitz, his shot completely eaten by Lee. And then, excuse me, Justin Sykes runs over Stainhouse. Yeah, you called a partner, but ice bags all around from Mimico after this one. <laughs> Gutsy performance here by their penalty killers down the stretch. We'll see if the Cats get one. Yes, indeed they do. It's Zavitz. Back within one. You know, you, you take enough chances, one of them's going to go in, right? And they've, they've been on the power play for most of this second half, most of this third quarter rather, and just shot after shot after shot. Defense starts to get worn down, goalie starts to get worn down, and finally Zavitz finds one to go. A little low to low worm burner there, but they don't ask how, they ask how many, and they need one more. 59 minutes, that might be your first lacrosse cliche. I haven't been counting, but well done. No timeouts here. It's the risk you take. One point game and hard hit there. Julian Race taken down in behind that Mimico net. 40 seconds to go. They will not use the timeout. Will Mimico as Moyer crosses center. Moyer has room. I think that's Lex a smart play by Moyer there to pull Lex it out. Lex to pull out. Dudamain checks the clock as well. We're under 30. And a huge play on the defensive end by Ferris there. They were trying to come out, set up their six on five play. Instead, he forced a quick turnover, and now St. Catholic will have 10 seconds with no timeout at the end. Waters here. for Dudamain, the shot, and big rebound here with 14 to go. Yep. St. Catharines picked up, no looked like they, they were going to signal it, though. And St. Catharines late in the count, do cross center. Two seconds to go, Webster. They're not going to get a shot as Sykes hard on Stainhouse as he was all night, and Mimico escaped with an 11 10 victory. Yeah, I mean, that's the risk you take when you when you uh, call a timeout in each of the first two periods. You know, a bit of a chaotic ending there, but really good fight by St. Catharines after a tough start to stay in that one and almost pull it out at the end. Mimico will move to 10 and 2. That ties them with second in the OJLL with Whitby with 10 wins. St. Catharines dropping to 9 and 5, still tied with 9 wins with the Toronto Beaches. Elsewhere tonight, it was a 10-9 victory for Orangeville over Burlington. Your final here from St. Catharines, 11-10 as the Mimico Mountaineers defeat the Athletics. Jonathan Donville, final thoughts from you. No, what a, what a great lacrosse game and a great arena too. A lot of great barns across this province. Uh, this is my first time here. I think the same for you. Yep. It's great to be here. Uh, so happy to be here showcasing the talent that these guys have and a, a great game by both teams and excited for another good one on Friday. Great call, by the way. Thank you. It's Congra great to be here. It's a lacrosse boss. <laughs> Congratulations. A lot of feedback on uh, your performance tonight. And uh, glad to have you along. Jonathan Donville will be back with us on Friday night, our next Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Presented by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, visit new.milk.org. Our director tonight was Ryan Harkness, our producer Gary Morrison on behalf of them, my partner Jonathan Donville, the rest of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League and the JVI Sports Network. I'm Matthew Carrick. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you again on Friday.